What is the Revolutionary Student Union? In short, we are the Socialist Student Organization at Texas Tech University. But what does that even mean? Politicians and media pundits use socialist almost like a slur. Joe Biden is a socialist. Bernie Sanders is a socialist. Hillary Clinton is a socialist. Mitt Romney is a socialist. Donald Trump is a socialist. Ask anyone and they'll probably find a way to call their least favorite politician a socialist. Well, despite the talking head's best attempts to void this word of all meaning, socialism has a long tradition of academic and practical history. Though variations have existed since time immemorial, modern socialism was defined by 19th century philosopher Karl Marx. He described history through the lens of class conflict. Peasants overthrew kings, academics discredited priests, and the old wealth aristocracy quietly faded into obscurity. Now remain two classes, the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. The bourgeoisie were once a small class of merchants that filled the power vacuum left by the waning power of monarchs. Also known as the owner class, this class makes its money primarily by owning the means of production. The means of production are exactly what they sound like. Farms, mines, factories, office buildings, computer mainframes, apartments, stores, and vehicles. The proletariat, or the working class, must work for a living. Specifically, they sell their labor to the bourgeoisie in return for wages. According to Marx, the world's final class conflict is between these two classes. Ultimately, the working class will win and establish communism. The dictatorship of the proletariat as opposed to the dictatorship of the bourgeoisie or monarchy. Marxist theories created a tree of ideologies known generally as socialism. Socialism in general has three core tenets, worker ownership of the means of production, abolition of capitalist property, and socioeconomic equality. Like Neapolitan ice cream, socialism comes with three flavors, communism, anarchism, and democratic socialism. While all pursue the core tenets of socialism, they disagree on the means to achieve those goals and what exactly those goals entail. We already discussed communism. A communist must closely follow the processes, dialectics, and ideas laid out by Karl Marx. They seek to establish the dictatorship of the proletariat he laid out, and they advocate for a global workers' revolution to permanently eliminate the bourgeoisie, ending all class conflict. Anarchists are not just arbiters of chaos. Rather, their philosophy states that anarchy is order. They seek to eliminate not just class structure, but all hierarchies. They oppose states, prisons, borders, and bosses. To an anarchist, economic class is but one of many unjust hierarchies that envelop humanity into chaos. Finally, democratic socialists pursue democracy in everything. Democracy in the economy, democracy in the workplace, and democracy in politics. To a democratic socialist, we nominally have political democracy, but our workplaces are dictated by bosses and the economy is geared towards profits, not people. By expanding and improving democracy, we will create a better society. The Revolutionary Students' Union is a non-tendency organization, so we take adherence to all of these ideologies and then some. While they are ultimately non-compatible, all three have similar immediate goals. We pursue four of these goals as a student organization. One raise class consciousness at Texas Tech and the greater West Texas community. A class conscious worker is aware of their own and their comrades' positions as part of a singular global working class with interests at odds with those of the bourgeoisie. We seek to raise this consciousness among all workers while eliminating false consciousnesses such as racism or xenophobia instilled by capitalists to distract workers from unifying against their true enemy. Two. Promote economic and social justice outside of capitalist frameworks. Neoliberalism only enacts justice in a time and manner that benefits the bourgeoisie, so it will never consistently improve the socioeconomic conditions of society's most vulnerable. Socialist intersectionality fights against oppressive social systems while also combating the superstructure of economic class. One fight without the other is incomplete, for both are inherently linked. Three. Educate the community about socialist and revolutionary ideology. Capitalist propaganda permeates every form of media. We counter their narratives with socialist propaganda, like this very video. We disseminate political messages backed by science, dialectics, and data. A community hardened against false capitalist narratives will more readily fight for their fellow workers. 4. Resist reactionary and regressive ideologies through grassroots action. Many see the harsh paradoxes of liberal capitalism, 
but instead of recognizing the superstructure of class, they buy the false narratives of fear and bigotry and take them to their horrendous conclusions. We especially oppose these regressive ideologies as they present an immediate threat to our communities and further divide the working class with false consciousness. Since the powerful will never truly oppose the very narratives they instill, we must fight fascism from the ground level. One student organization cannot overthrow capitalism, but a united working class can. Every person's voice can make a difference to radicalize their community against tyranny. Contact us through the information in the description or form your own revolutionary union. Remember, you have nothing to lose but your chains.